The Department of Education in the U.S. state of Florida recently pressured textbook publishers to remove references to climate change, especially human-caused climate change, from science textbooks used in the state, as the Orlando Sentinel reported in early July 2024. This caught my attention, since I'm Glenn Branch, Deputy Director of the National Center for Science Education, a nonprofit organization that defends the teaching of socially controversial but scientifically uncontroversial topics like evolution and climate change. In Florida's censorship efforts, middle school science textbooks, those for students grades 6 through 8, ages 11 through 14, suffered especially since Florida's science standards, to which textbooks must conform, do not include the topic of climate change at all at the middle school level. Well, climate change education is a critical component of any plan for responding to climate change, simply because future generations will face the challenges of dealing with the disruptions owing to climate change and thus need to be equipped with the requisite knowledge and know-how to cope with them. Ed Maybach, a climate change communications expert at George Mason University, has helpfully encapsulated the basics of climate change in eight monosyllables. It's real. It's us. It's bad. There's hope. I'm going to add a corollary here, inevitably in the form of two more syllables. Teach it. So it's not hard to understand why the nation's leading science education organizations, like the National Science Teaching Association, call for climate change education in primary, secondary, and higher education. Yet Americans are currently unlikely to study climate change during their formal education, in part because mandatory climate education is rare at the college level. And of course, not everybody goes to college. Currently, only a minority of Americans 25 years and older, around 38%, have earned a bachelor's degree. Before college, the most hospitable course for climate change education is high school earth science, but such courses are few and far between. According to the latest data, less than a quarter of public high school graduates take such a course, and only eight states require the study of earth science concepts at the high school level. So the middle school level is of particular importance. For most Americans, it is the last stage in their formal education where a relatively extensive study of climate change, its causes, its consequences, and the potential ways of mitigating and adapting to those consequences might be expected. That's why a team of researchers at the National Center for Science Education, including me, and Penn State University took a careful look to see how climate change education is faring in the public middle school science classrooms of the U.S., with a paper recently published in a special issue. In the study, we compared the results of two nationally representative surveys of public middle school science teachers we conducted in 2014 and five years later in 2019. These teachers were asked, among other things, about how many class hours they devoted to teaching about recent global warming. This question did not mention the causes of climate change. There were significant increases. Moreover, not all middle school teachers may have been teaching a class to which recent global warming was relevant. If we just look at teachers who taught about recent global warming at all, the time devoted to the topic rose from 4.4 to 6.5 class hours. To get a sense about what the teachers were doing, we also gave them a series of prompts, beginning, when I teach about climate change, I emphasize that, and ask them to indicate whether they strongly agreed, somewhat agreed, somewhat disagreed, or strongly disagreed with the prompts. Here too we see progress. The percentage of teachers strongly agreeing that they emphasize that global temperatures have risen in the last 150 years rose sharply, doubling from 27% to 54%. The percent disagreeing, strongly or somewhat, dropped from 9% to 5%. The percentage of teachers strongly agreeing that they emphasize the scientific consensus that recent global warming is primarily caused by the human release of greenhouse gases from fossil fuels also rose sharply from 34% to 52%. The percentage disagreeing strongly or somewhat dropped from 12% to 
to 7%. Not all of the news was good. In the 2014 survey, we found a disturbing level of mixed messages, science teachers emphasizing correctly the scientific consensus on the human causes of recent global warming, and also emphasizing incorrectly that many scientists disagree. Unfortunately, we did not see any change between 2014 and 2019 with respect to middle school science teachers. 37% of them were delivering mixed messages in both years. There was a slight rise in those emphasizing only the scientific consensus, but this was not statistically significant. There were further changes, mostly improvements too, which I won't describe now. Instead, I want to describe our attempt to understand the causes of these improvements. We looked at various personal characteristics of the teachers, demography, education, and personal beliefs, and also at the treatment of climate change in their state science standards. I mentioned state science standards before. These are documents indicating what knowledge and know-how students are expected to acquire in the course of their science education in their given state. So they play a big, although not a decisive, role in classroom education, since teacher preparation, textbook content, and statewide testing all follow state science standards. There's a lot of variance. In 2020, NCSC and the Texas Freedom Network Education Fund conducted a study of the treatment of climate change in state science standards, assigning letter grades to each state. A bare majority of states, 27 out of 50, received a grade of B plus or better. Florida got a D. In our study, we found that the quality of the treatment of climate change in state science standards, circa 2014, was associated with teacher attention to climate change as reflected in the number of class hours devoted to the topic. That's consistent with prior work suggesting that improving standards leads to improved classroom results. As for personal characteristics of our middle school teachers, the proportion saying that they think that global warming is caused mostly by human activities rose from 67% to 76%, a rise of nine percentage points. The proportion correctly thinking that between 81 and 100% of climate scientists think that global warming is caused by humans rose from 30% to 45%, a rise of 14 percentage points, not 15 because of rounding. Parenthetically, the correct range for the consensus question is indeed 81 to 100%. Since multiple independent studies using different methods have consistently produced estimates of the extent of scientific consensus on anthropomorphic climate change among climate scientists converging in the neighborhood of 97%. And we found that teachers' personal beliefs with regard to climate change were associated with various positive classroom outcomes, beliefs in human-caused climate change and in human-caused climate change as a matter of scientific consensus were highly correlated, so we just took them together. The teacher's belief had a strong effect, accounting for between 20 through 55% of the positive classroom outcomes change. So there are signs of progress. Our study indicates that climate change education in the U.S. is improving at the crucial middle school level, and by offering explanations for those improvements, points the way to further improvements. Certainly, there's a lot of room for improvement in both state science standards and in teacher preparation. But don't expect massive change overnight. Science education in the United States is more like a freight train than a Ferrari. It's made up of a lot of loosely linked components, there are something like 13,500 local school districts. It's expensive, even more so than a Ferrari, and it takes a long time to change directions. So progress is always going to be slow, uneven, and incremental. It is certainly encouraging that when pollsters ask people whether they support schools teaching about the causes, consequences, and potential solutions to global warming, about three in four of them say that they strongly or somewhat support it. And that's true even in Florida. The challenge is to translate the public support for climate change education in the abstract into support for specific policies, improvements in state science standards and corresponding investments in teacher preparation that the evidence suggests will lead to improved climate change education in the science classrooms of America's public schools.